If you want to know how to do collage quilting, you're going to want to watch today's video because I'm going to be taking a look at a book that explains the whole process. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today I'm taking a look at Collage Quilter, Essentials for Success with Collage Quilts. This is the second edition book that I have, and this is by Emily Taylor. And you'll find information about Emily under her website called collagequilter.com. So I'm obsessed with collage quilts. I've been thinking about doing one for a long time. I've looked at lots of different ways of doing them because there's lots of different techniques, and I really like Emily's technique. So let's take a look at her book. Now, Emily will talk first about color because choosing the right colors of fabrics and also the right tones, shades, lightness, darkness of fabrics is really important to get that realistic look in a collage quilt. So she's gonna start off with talking about different colors. She's gonna be talking about color schemes. And so you can understand that concept before you start applying it to your projects. And of course, one of the things I think is, in my mind, even more important than color is the contrast of the light and dark fabrics that you have in your project because without a change in you know between light and dark without that contrast your quilt kind of reads as flat and sometimes you don't see the details in it either so she goes through that and she explains why now you can see here here's a perfect example here with this little quail you can see here where you've got the contrast more here than there if you don't have them and they all read the same the fabrics it's hard to even see the details on the quail. So I thought that was a really good example because that's exactly what happens if you don't mix up your fabrics and get different uh, tones in there. I'm, I'm using the word tones, not in reference to how it is used in colors, but just tone as far as light and dark here. Okay, so you can see, for example, here on this particular project called the horse, where she's got these different, you know, there's light, there's mid-tone where it's changing into, uh, you know, going to lighter or darker here. Again, this mid-tone value here, so you can see, and then there's the dark, you can see how there's transitioning going on between your light to the medium to the darks here. That gives those shadows that are so important for us to recognize this as a horse with its head turned, right? Otherwise, it would just be kind of this blob and you wouldn't exactly know what's going on there. So the book has lots of color photos in it, lots of uh, explanations of the concept she's talking about. So that really helps you to get in that right mindset and helps you to pick the appropriate fabrics that are gonna make this project, whatever project you may be working on, work and very effective because you don't wanna put all this time and effort into it and then it's, you know, it doesn't look the way you want it to. Having said that, you know, with any new technique you're doing, there's typically a little bit of practice you need doing and keep that in mind, okay, because you know, your first project might not be exactly what you want, but the more you go into it and the more you use those um, ideas that she's talking about in the front of the book, those concepts, the better or the more pleased you'll get with your project. I don't want to say better, but, you know, as we practice things, we do tend to get a bit better at them, right? Okay, so she's talking about neutrals too, which is also an interesting discussion, okay? Neutrals are almost never neutral, and this is something that people sometimes don't understand. So a, a good example, I always think, like she's looking at cream colors here. She's looking at the, the purples in the eggplant, which are a warm kind of color. Um, here you've got the flower with the warm red tones and the cooler blue gives that contrast again. But my example I always use with people is grays, okay? Because people will put gray in a quilt and it doesn't work and they don't know why it doesn't work because even gray, which is like a neutral, um, I guess you call it a neutral, you know, it's just not, it's not cream, but it's, you know, it's, grays, browns, I call those neutrals, tan kind of colors, they still have undertones in them. So, you know, they might be a warm undertone, a reddish kind of gray, if you will, or a cool, a blue kind of gray. You'll even see that in your threads. So that's something to keep in mind too, when you're choosing uh, fabrics, especially the neutrals that are gonna go in these projects, keep in mind that they, they have warm or cool undertones too, and that's important to realize when you're selecting them for your particular project. Then she gets into the different supplies that you need because there are things you need to make these quilts, of course. And so you'll talk about things like uh, fusible webs. She'll talk about things like glue because she does use glue sometimes, right? So all the different supplies that you need, you'll have those all laid out so that you will know what you need to get if you don't have them in your studio already. How much fabric? Well, that's always a little tough when you're doing collage quilts, but you do need to have a range. You can see again here where she's got very light to very dark fabrics, okay? So she says, as quilters, we tend to generally buy fabric that falls in the middle range, and I know I'm guilty of that for sure, because when I go to make a quilt and I want something lighter, I'm like, 
where is it? <laughs> right? And keep in mind that one fabric can be either a light, a medium, or dark, depending on what other fabrics you place it with. Okay, she does explain that in the book as well. She talks about different types of fabric you can use, batiks, printed uh, fabrics. And also, this is a, a fun tip here and a very helpful tip, is if you can't get exactly the right color, if you've got a fabric that's closed but not quite right, maybe need something a little lighter, flip the fabric over, okay? Don't forget to use the back side of some fabrics, not batiks because they look the same on the front and back, but most printed fabrics, you know, flipping it over may be exactly the tone of uh, fabric, the shade of fabric, that you need to have that contrast in your project. Something we often forget, right? We're so used to just using the right side of it. Okay, then she also talks about fussy cutting because she does do this in some of her projects to get exactly a detail that she wants. So for example, here she's fussy cut this out. So she wants that whole detail there. She doesn't want to cut off part of it. She wants to use a whole thing or a whole leaf here, for example. So that's something else to consider when you're doing collage quilting. Here's some of the adhesives she was talking about that I mentioned before in supplies. Um, different Eileen, Aliens Tacky Glue or Fabric Fusion, both of which I have in my studio, <laughs> and both of which are really easy to get and inexpensive. Uh, the fusible web she likes to use, uh, Light Steam Aseam 2 she likes to use, and also parchment paper. Okay, this is not freezer paper, but parchment paper. I use that in my studio all the time because I like to do fusible web applique. Um, in this case, she's actually going to be building her design on the parchment paper, so she needs it for that part of the project. And then she talks you through. So there are different projects at the back, okay? This is the foundation method she talks about. And this one's called Plum Pretty. And she talks about how she prepares the design, how she selects the fabric, and how she prepares that as well, because it's going to have to have that light steam seam too on the back of it. And then she'll talk about how she does the collage, okay? So in detail, explanation of how to do it. Again, lots of photos so you can follow along. She also talks about the background here as well. And in a case like this, which she calls edge to edge collage, you know, the background is not one piece of fabric like it is here, for example. She is actually going, as she says, edge to edge. The whole piece is made with the collage technique. So again, you see here the same type of information coming with different um, patterns. This particular one is with a teapot. And so she shows you the different fabrics she's using. So you can see the array from the lighter to the, you know, the darker fabrics in there. And she shows you how she cuts it, how she puts it on the steam seam. So you've got all the step-by-step -step instructions you need in this book to do collage quilting. So I really appreciate all that information. You can see that she's building out this particular design on the parchment paper. So she shows you how to do that too. And then we have different examples. Here's the one she was working on, but there's also teacups as well. So she's got these in here. Another helpful tip, you can reverse the teacup or the teapot, like you can see these two are reversed, by flipping over the design, right, before she traces it onto the parchment paper to build her design. Here's another project that's in the book. And I get mixed up because there's two different parrots here. So I have to go back, sorry, I just have to go back for a minute. This is pretty parrots, okay. So here's one of the ones she's using and you can see here with all these different leaves that she's fussy cut to get those leaves in there. She could have just built those leaves with, or that background with just bits of green, but not nearly as effective as putting the leaves in there, right? So it gives another place for you to take a look. Here's one here where you've just got it on a regular printed background and that's what she started with. But you can see how adding those leaves is just really intensifies that design much more interesting. Then the back of the book, she's got the different templates that you can use. And her templates are in grayscale. So that gives you the, uh, you know, the lights, the little bit darker, a little bit darker, you know, and the darks. So you know what colors of fabric, not colors, but what depth of or intensity of color, you know, what tone of fabric to pick when you're making these different projects. So that's really helpful. There's different parrots there. There's that the teapot again. And some of these designs, you can see the parents, the parrots <laughs> are much more detailed. So you might want to start with something simpler, you know, like the teapot, for example. So you can use these here. You do need to enlarge the, some of them. Um, or she has the QR codes where you can scan them and that will bring up the full size PDF file and you can take that to a print shop and have them printed off on a bigger size paper. So here's all the different projects. Again, you've got just some designs here, it's up to you how you want to combine these, what kind of a background you want to put them on, that type of thing. She does go through some of them and explains what she's done 
with them and you saw with the parrot and everything and again there's more details that she goes through and even here where she's actually doing some coloring in if you want to provide some uh, different colors in there you can do that and use these ink tense pencils so lots of ideas in here for how to create those designs and kind of refine them if you will if you want to call it that putting you know doing some that fussy cutting uh, using some of the ink tense pencils to get different colors in there that you might need in a certain area to shade it for example so if you're interested in collage quilting which can be really fun and of course let's not forget that it's using up your fabric scraps and who doesn't have those right so it's a perfect technique to use up your fabric scraps for sure I would suggest you take a look at Collage Quilter by Emily Taylor. And so if you take a look in the description below, I'll put a link to this book so you can take a look at it in more detail and maybe even get your own copy. One thing I wanted to mention to you before I end the video is that if you are a subscriber and you've been following me for a while, you may notice that there's something different below my videos. And that's a heart with the dollar sign in it. And that's a, an opportunity for you to help support the Chatterbox Quilts company and the Chatterbox Quilts YouTube channel in particular. So for as little as $2, you can contribute money so that it allows me to buy the books and fabric and other items that I need to create these free videos for you. So if you want to do that, you can just click on that little heart with a dollar sign in it and contribute as much money as you would like to to the channel. And if you do that, I would be absolutely thrilled and very grateful. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like this video, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.